Welcome. Today is day 12, and today's scripture is Luke 12, 13 through 21. My name is Katie. Our guiding question over this Lent season is what is the next brave and right thing that Holy Spirit wants me to do today? Before we jump into today's scripture, let's take a moment to spend some uninterrupted time with God. Some, create some space in your day where you don't have to multitask. Take a deep breath in and out and come into an awareness that God is with you right now. Repeat this short prayer after me and spend a moment in silence, just being aware of God's presence with you. Father, I receive your love. Today's scripture is Luke 12, 13 through 21. It says this, Then someone called from the crowd, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Jesus replied, Friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, Beware, guard yourself against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and all other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. Our focus this week has been surrendering selfishness and embracing service and generosity. This parable from Jesus goes right after our selfishness and generosity. And just to be real and authentic with you all, this parable kind of bothered me the first time I read it. As a single woman who has had chronic pain the majority of her life, a fear I've had is, will I have enough money to care for the, myself medically in the future? But looking closer at this parable and considering the historical context, Jesus is not telling us to not save for the future. He's addressing our mindset and intentions with this parable. Now, a parable is a telling of a story that illustrates a point. It was Jesus' main form of communicating. He would be standing by a countryside and tell a story about soil, but it was actually going to our heart condition. With this parable, Jesus is addressing two men who are having a dispute over their father's estate. Now, in those days, it wasn't uncommon for a rabbi like Jesus or a priest to settle disputes for people. That was a practice established with the Israelites back in the Old Testament. But because Jesus is Jesus, fully God and fully man, he knows that there's more going on in this dispute. And the parable is to get at the heart condition of the two men and their motives. Did you notice in the parable how this rich man referred to things? He said things like, my crops, my barn, my wheat. I will sit back and I will take it easy. That's Jesus' point. Our focus and motives cannot be about building a me kingdom. If this rich man had said, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. I know, my neighbors haven't been doing so well with their growing their crops. Let's build bigger barns so the community can have enough stored away for years to come. It's subtle, but that's a different mindset. That's surrendering a me kingdom for the kingdom of God. 
When we embrace a life of generosity, seeing the provision of God as a tool for us to be generous with others, it changes the way we give, which changes the way we live. And this doesn't just apply to money, right? We can store earthly wealth with our time. When I put together my calendar for the week, am I concerned with my priorities, my goals, what I want to do? Or am I generous with my time, looking for opportunities to connect, engage, and serve the people in my circles of influence, my family and friends? And before we close, before we move on, I just want to address God's statement at the very end in this parable in response to the man's me kingdom attitude when God says, you fool, you will die this very night. Then who, who will get everything you worked for? Now you could take this two ways, right? First, as you could take it as God sentencing this rich man to death because of his attitude. But I, I take it a different way. I see God saying this from a perspective of, hey, we don't know when we're gonna die. As Pastor Marvin says, every day we get is a bonus day. So I feel like God in this parable is saying like, dude, you're, you don't know this, but you're not gonna live to use this wheat and you've hoarded it for yourself instead of living generously. This parable is a reminder that as we go about our days and plan our, for our futures, are we doing it from a place of storing earthly wealth in our me kingdoms? Or are we embracing the invitation from Jesus to live a life of generosity, being generous with our time and our money? As we move towards a time of prayer, reflect on this question. Where in your life are you storing up earthly wealth? And invite the Holy Spirit into those areas and listen for how to respond. And remember, we want you to know that your prayers don't need to be filled with words. You can be silent before God and wait on Him. Repeat this short prayer after me and then allow God to speak to you. God, I'm here and I'm listening.